Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. All right, so we left off right around here and um, I'll just go through what we were just talking about briefly about the Syrian rebels maybe attacking the Russian naval base. And Russia's in the news right now as far as their embassy being attacked in London. Also with the punk rock group uh, basically being sentenced to two years in jail. So this is by no coincidence that they're trying to um, bring Russia into the limelight, basically to demonize them for whatever reason, right? I mean, they're selling uranium stuff to UAE, which is backed by uh, Israel and the U.S. So, like I said, it's all business. Just... So, yeah, Israel was losing support among Britons. So, talking about losing support for the Israeli regime. So, you know, this is their uh, this is their punishment, right? To have a nice little Rena mob, Rena protesters, uh, unleash them to attack the Russian embassy to give it the appearance of a grassroots uh, movement and at the same time you have what pro-Kremlin youth group to send delegation to Syria so here we go the leader of the pro-Kremlin youth group announced that his organization would be sending a delegation to Syria to inspect objects of culture and historical significance under threat due to warning uh, government uh, due to warring government and rebel forces remember I talked about this about Libya Iraq now Syria, where um, like in Aleppo, a lot of historical things were being destroyed. Uh, that usually is in the wake of these rebel Syria, or basically rebel terrorists, what they are hired by the West. Uh, Russian punkers get two years in jail for U.S. State Department stunt. So America's troop of activists continue to attempt to divide and undermine the Russian society. So the writers of Land Destroyer Report ask, when the U.S. is overtly backing the terrorist invasion of Syria seeing to the death, displacement, and disruption of millions of lives abroad while hosting a mass-murdering fugitive dictator at home, what then is it to back an act of hooliganism or shenanigans in a Russian church targeting a geopolitical rival? The U.S. State Department backed so-called punk band going by the name of... I hate saying this word. I don't like saying this like that movie. Um, uh, What was it called? The Big Lebowski, I don't like using the V word or the P word, so uh, we'll call them the riot, stormed into a Moscow church, defaming the Russian government while mocking the beliefs of churchgoers with vulgarity and disruptive behavior. Marketed as an act of freedom of expression by the Western media and the West collection of foreign ministries, it was in reality what would be called both a hate crime and disorderly conduct in the West. Furthermore, in the West, such an act would come with its steep fines and lengthy jail sentences. So it goes on, it says, the West has jailed many for similar or lesser offenses. Three years in jail for revising history. In 2006, the BBC reported British historian David Irving has been found guilty in Vienna of denying the Holocaust of European Jewry and sentenced to three years in prison. The BBC also reported the judge in his 2000 libel trial declared him an active Holocaust denier, anti-Semitic, and racist. So his beliefs, as unpopular as they may be, were expressed in his writings and speechings, speeches, sorry, not in the middle of a synagogue he had burst into. Uh, four years and two years in jail for operating a racist website for the crime of operating a U.S.-based racist website and possessing with the intent to distribute racist material to British men, uh, sentenced to four years and two years, respectively, in the U.K. in 2009. Said the, the judge said they told the men their material use was abusive, insulting, and the potential to cause grave social harm. So unlike this ban the riot in Russia, however, these two men only crammed their leaflets into the door of a synagogue instead of bursting in. And they got four years for it. So again, five years in jail for disagreeing with mainstream history. Also in 2009, a man was jailed for five years for propagating Nazi ideas and Holocaust denial in Austria. So it goes on here, as Reuters reported, this individual apparently wrote books and magazines which he attempted to distribute in schools. Oh, they got a monopoly on re-education, rewritten history. You don't do that. So this here uh, said there, though it was the content of the material, not the manner in which he tried to distribute it, earned him a lengthy jail sentence. And we'll finish up here. It says, uh, three years in jail for harassing a Jewish man in public hate speech. In 2011, an Australian man posted an anti-Semitic video on YouTube, earning him a three-year jail sentence. The video apparently showed the convicted man insulting a Jewish man before going on a tirade in front of the Perth Bell Tower in Australia. So clearly insulting someone Australian creating a public disturbance is a punishable crime. 
yet somehow the Australian government sees insulting churchgoers in Russia as a freedom of expression. And, uh, you know, one of the weird things about the whole anti-Semitic thing is that someone left in the comment board, I don't know how true this is, but he's saying uh, cement, Semitic is uh, usually synonymous with being of Arab origin, and most people that are of Jewish origin tend to not want to call themselves Arabs. So it'd be kind of weird they call them anti-Semitic or anti-Arab when they don't even consider themselves Arab. So many in the comment boards I noticed of this uh, story in the articles are saying it's, um, you know, these people are expressing art, right? It's an expression of art, art and politics in Russia today. So the feminist ban support campaign is spearheaded by this Oksana uh, Chelshafya of the U.S. State Department funded Russian Chechen Friendship Society, a clearinghouse for uh, these Chechen terrorist propaganda, along with the U.S. State Department subsidized uh, Alexei Nalvani, remember we covered him, and the West media outlets on their side, the hooligan anti-establishment punk rockers, as they're saying, that's what they're calling themselves, now on trial in Moscow have a decidedly establishment backing. Uh, yeah, like uh, up here, the National Endowment for Democracy, supporting freedom around the world. So the West, and more specifically, the corporate financier interests of Wall Street and London, see Russia's current government as a barrier to not only the return to an unmitigated plundering of the Russian people they have enjoyed in the 90s, but a check and balance inhibiting their hegemonic ambitions globally. The West is propped up with money and political support, the opposition movement from which the riot has uh, emanated. So it says here that this latest stunt was to breathe new life into this wannabe divide and conquer a strategy. And it says here, instead, this latest stunt does little more than further expose the increasingly visible hypocrisy and injustice pervading all parts of Western society. So this ban, the riot, uh, solidarity, topless Ukrainian activist chainsaw a crucifix. So the leader of the Ukrainian activist group Femin took a chainsaw to a cross in Kiev in protest of the band's trial demonstration showing solidarity for the punk band having sprung up worldwide on the day of the riot's verdict. So the feminist movement who recorded and took photos of the act of vandalism said it was a sign of solidarity for the victims of the medieval witch hunt. We want to show the authorities that no imbecile has the right to trample on freedom of speech and the rights of women and shut them away in jail, said the spokesman for the movement. So apparently this is a picture of them. So believers, they say, I guess that's the basically people that are part Russian Orthodox, can neither accept the use of their churches as venues for political protest actions nor wish for a prison sentence for the girls. But it goes on here as one of these individuals, uh, Yavalinsky, said it's a pity that it took the girls six months to apologize to the believers. So one of the last points I like to make about this, and then I'll move on because we're talking about creating instability um, inside Russia because they pose a threat to the Western powers. And it goes on here and it says that uh, this individual, an MP, said that they threw themselves into politics and it's cruel here. A large people, large group of people gathered near the court where the verdict was announced. At one point, the tensions got so high that police had to detain members of the crowd. So it said about 60 protesters comprised of people who were both for and against the punk band trio were detained. And another Russia official said the verdict must become a warning to all fans of various provocations. So, you know, they just passed that foreign agents bill, which is basically NGOs that try to go in there and stir this stuff up, like we were just talking about, U.S. State Department funded protesters. Um, it's a warning to them, right? You're going to be listed as a foreign agent. So, so speaking of a Renta protester, we have Renta Thug. Libyan fighters joined Syrian revolt against Assad. So veteran fighters of last year's civil war, I, guess, I think it was just a terrorist invasion of Libya, have come to the front line in Syria, helping to train and organize rebels under conditions far more dire than those in the battle against Gaddafi. And it wasn't a battle against Gaddafi, it was a battle against the Jemaharia, which is which a system that Gaddafi created, which is a weird system. It was socialist in a way. It was also... Uh, somewhat of uh, democratic, they had local tribes that spoke up for their local uh, s uh, sex and that. So uh, it was a weird system, but it tended to work. The only problem is that it wasn't so centralized and militar militaristic that they wouldn't, they couldn't take the onslaught of uh, these um, Western-backed terrorists invading their country. 
So Assyrian rebels warn that they will turn to Al-Qaeda if West fails them. So I've been covering this for about three months now that the Al-Qaeda was openly operating with the Syrian rebels. And in fact, the Syrian rebels, half of them were Al-Qaeda. But now they're warning the West, if you don't start giving us what we want, more goodies, we're going to turn to Al-Qaeda. In fact, the Syrian rebels seek new leverage with abductions. That's right, kidnappings with gunmen standing in the background. It says here, the uh, Syrian rebels are purporting to show their latest captive, a lone Lebanese Shiite suspected of uh, basically pro-regime Hezbollah, uh, basically was abducted part of a wider strategy shift to target perceived backers of Assad. So, Syrian rebels cheerfully admit to war crimes. That's right. In an interview with the Free Syrian Army, um, basically, leader, he admitted to summarily executing a gravely injured man accused without trial of being a, um, was it, a Shabia militia sniper loyal to Assad. So, there you go. It says here uh, that Syrian rebels are apparently killing seriously injured men without any kind of due processes unsurprising however uh, considering the widely acknowledged fact that many of them are actually allied to al-qaeda is surprising to some people who don't know what's going on syria deputy health minister assassinated in dara so just like in libya what did they do they took down the hospitals they couldn't care for their people anymore i mean i remember that the hospitals were getting backed up and people were dying because they were kept attacking the hospitals these rebels Latest UN Syria report compiled by Washington think tankers. So collections of, quote, interviews conducted abroad and in the field shape latest UN report compiled by U.S. or compiled by U.S. corporate financier representative Karen Koning. And speaking of the UN, you have what? Syrian terrorists bomb UN observers in Damascus. That's right. Uh, you can go in there and check that video out with uh, James Corbett, the Corbett Report, and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. So, yeah, the, the Syrian rebels attacked the UN observers in Damascus. So they're leaving now. That's right. And shifting gears here, U.S. reliance on oil from Saudi Arabia is growing again. Now, I've already heard about Saudi Arabia's oil um, stakes or claims, whatever, isn't as much as what everybody thinks. So it says here, U.S. is increasing its dependence on oil from Saudi Arabia, importing its... Uh, uh, raising its imports from the kingdom by more than 20% this year. So it makes this article make sense, right? This is from a, this was from the 16th yesterday. This is from just about a day ago. Exclusive White House studying potential oil reserve release. So they're dusting off the old plans for a potential release of oil reserves to dampen rising gasoline prices and prevent high energy costs from blah, 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 blah. It's all about business, right, guys? Strategic importance of Indian Ocean not appreciated, says the Australian Defense Minister. Say China and India are building a number of new ports along one of the world's greatest trade routes and a new rivalry for strategic influence over the Indian Ocean. So I wonder if the Australians got the memo from basically their owners, the uh, basically Britain, they're eyeing oil reserves in Somalia deposits beneath the Indian Ocean, which is believed to equal those in Kuwait. That's right. So it says here, U.S.-backed Ugandan military deploys Air Force over Somalia. The growing proxy war in East Africa is bound to have severe blowback. So, yeah, that's that's why they're there. Talking about Somalia and that. U.S.-led drone strike kills seven, injures 17 in Somalia capital. That's just one U.S. drone strike. They're happening almost every other day, killing at least 5 to 20 people per drone strike. So, I remember uh, Somalia was one of those countries that actually defended themselves and their sovereignty against England and Germany before. So this is what they did. They divided them in half, and now they're just going to bomb the hell out of the rest of the country, the South, until they submit and they get their oil contracts, and it will help, help out the people. No, it won't. Yes, they may have McDonald's and iPhones, but then they'll become debt slaves, just like us over here. So Pakistan, that's the big, that's the big, in, that's the big thing, right? That's the big thing hand, uh, standing in the way. Uh, in I of Iran, of attacking Iran, and in Syria, remember I said that, because they're nuclear, that's the thing, you have to remember, they have a puppet government, western puppet government in Pakistan, but they also have nuclear weapons. Pakistani slam killing of Shia Muslims, hundreds have taken the streets in the southern city of Karachi to protest against the killing of Shia Muslims across the country. And remember, they're trying to start a civil war there in Syria as well, this is what it's all about, starting a civil war between Shias and Sunnis, and the Sunnis are usually backed by Saudi Arabia, the Zionists, and the West. U.S.-led drone strike uh, in Pakistan kills civilians. So remember me talking about the anniversary of Pakistan uh, independence and India independence. Look at this. The Indians bragging about how they were going to be ready. Well, they're ready. They killed six Pakistani citizens, including two women and a child. Pa 
Pakistan nukes are in safe hands. This is after a gunman attacked the Pakistani Air Force Base. This comes after the U.S. warned Pakistan about their nuclear assets getting in the hands of extremists. Or do they mean out of the hands of the West?